the one thing I would want anyone to do is to just get very real about how you feel. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen. Today's episode is an honest conversation talking about change and evolution, both internally and externally. For example, changing as a person with your mental health and becoming more of your authentic self, changing careers and finding a path that's more fulfilling, and also experiencing changes in your friendships as well. Today, we're having back on the podcast, Amy Lee. So my friend Amy was on the podcast back in March of 2019. So that was episode 106. It was called Body Shame, Self-Love, and Authenticity as an Online Influencer, if you want to go back to that episode. But today, it basically felt like a conversation catching up with an old friend on all the changes that have happened in her life lately. So our guest, Amy Lee, is a transformational life coach, digital content creator, motivational speaker, and recovered CPTSD survivor. She specializes in healing narcissistic abuse and codependency with a focus on inner child healing and nonviolent communication. So I hope you enjoy today's conversation with Amy Lee. Hi, Amy. Welcome back to the podcast. How are you doing? Hello, Eileen. I'm so happy to see you. I feel like we've all gone through hell and back. So it's just <laughs> seriously, nice to, like, this is see. a new version of both of us, right? Like after we've like peeled off a lot of things. <laughs> 100%. And I feel like I haven't um, caught up with you in a while, just like mm-hmm. as a friend. So I'm yes. excited to see your face and your bright ass smile. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. Same, same. Yeah. So I, we were talking about how the last time you were on the podcast, it was March, 2019. And a lot has changed since then. I've seen you evolve and blossom as a person and step into more of who you truly are and, and your purpose. So catch us up on your story. Maybe like tell us a little background for those of you who or for people who haven't, you know, listened to the first podcast. Um and then just catch us up in like, you know, the past three years. For sure. I just want to say I recognize that in you just as well. And before we were talking about how I was so sad about the podcast break because this podcast really is something that I look forward to listening to. Um, but I totally like resonated with everything that you were saying on that farewell uh, for now podcast episode. So I feel like for people who are just tuning in, I guess, about or with me, um, last time I was on here, I think my even like job or title description was different, which is funny. You were more um, of a content creator, YouTuber, influencer. Yes. yes. Yeah. It was like a mental health advocate, you know, um, YouTube person that is just trying to talk about healing and spirituality and trauma. Um, and I feel like now, um, in the past, I think about eight months, I was transitioning into becoming a certified life coach, which I did become. Um, and I work with over 10 clients and I consider myself a transformational life coach, meaning that you come to me and through trauma, energetic strategy, um, but lots and lots and lots of trauma healing. Um, that's like the foundation and a bunch of other techniques. I pretty much change your life and whatever, in whatever capacity that the client wants. So whether that's, I say life coaching, because I know that there's so many different types of coaching right now, career coaching, um, you know, finance coaching, relationship coaching. I do like and to the best of my ability, I do as much as I can in your entire life, whether it's finance, love, um, self-esteem, career. And so it is what I have loved to do. And I feel like I was coaching on the AM with Amy on YouTube every Monday. Um, but now I get to just do it in more um, close capacity just because content creation, even though it's super amazing and was like my dream my passion for so long, I feel like as we've evolved and as we talked about before, um, it's not my dream and my passion right now. Like I'm very burnt out and I kind of just don't want to be, um, the front facing part of my career anymore. I kind of want to just have my clients be the star. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my long winded answer. (laughs) 
I mean, I, I want to know a little bit more details about so many parts, but that is a big shift that I have noticed too, is like you've stepped away from being in front of the camera as much and you're more engaged in your like private one-on-one client sessions. Um, what kind of inspired you to pivot in that direction? And, you know, it, cause people think, oh my God, YouTuber, that's a dream job. Why would you ever want to not do that anymore? So what were you thinking and going through? Well, first off, I think just simply put, and I think a lot of creators should start to really um, digest or unpack this um, because in the sense of everybody in their life evolves and grows, right? And I think in maybe the corporate sense, right, we understand that people go from intern to, you know, hopefully a C-level position, like CEO, chairman, whatever. Um, and so they, you, you kind of get that upward mobility, right? But I feel like content creation, while it might seem really amazing for the times right now, I think that in a lot of ways we can get stuck in just thinking that we are only, you know, X, Y, Z. Like I'm only here to show up for these vlogs or this type of video and this category. And so I think just from a mental health, like psychological self-development perspective, um, I changed. And so also my job is going to change. And on a personal level, it was, I think I'm at a time where I don't want things to be all about me. I think a lot about content creation is, um, it's kind of like hall of mirrors everywhere you go. Um, you see yourself, you know, you are the brand, you're the mentor, you're the vlogger, you're the creator, you're the producer. Um, and especially coming from fashion and beauty, Eileen, like, because I feel like when I found your videos, I was like, oh my God, this is a breath, <laughs> breath of fresh air. That's so true. And you it, were in like, yeah. fashion, and, I, yeah, I and it, that during that time. Yeah. No, it, what a time to be alive. Like 10 years ago, loved it. But I think seeing your videos, I was like, oh, wow, this is a person that, you know, you, I just seeing your channel, I was like this, you, you, Eileen are, you know, the person speaking to us, but I love that it was not always about you. It was about, you know, development, helping others. And I think that was so, it, you were a pioneer of that time oh, I, and, and still are. Like I, it was such a breath of fresh air for me. And it was a huge inspiration for me to kind of take the focus off of myself eventually. Um, and so I think right now I'm just really unhappy. I'm going to be really honest. I'm super unhappy with having to be a public figure, but it's more so I value privacy. I don't want to be on camera. I don't want to share my life. I'm tired and I'm sad. So, um, I wanted to still help people, um, just in a different capacity. And I feel like in a much larger capacity because the results that I get with my clients, it's, I'm crying at the end of every session because I'm so proud of the work that they've done. Um, so I think I just changed long yeah. story short. I changed, I was unhappy and I don't know. I don't think everybody knows the, um, repercussions or the, um, downside of being a public figure or having a public display career. It is really hard on the soul. I feel. Yeah. So. Wow. I, I feel you on a lot of levels. And what I'm hearing about your story is like, number one, you didn't want to be boxed in because you were changing. So you needed a different box or a bigger box. Right. And secondly, is like, instead of, cause as an influencer, yeah, you kind of help people like through your, your vlogs, you like share your thoughts, but it's more like general, like breath. And now like when you're working with clients, you're going deeper. So it's like depth over the, you know, breath. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So I, it sounds to me like I, I'm happy to hear that you found something that feels more fulfilling and that you have energy for. Because being an influencer, it, it's we all burn out. Like it's exhausting. The pressure just, yeah, it's it's not something that is sustainable unless you know how to fix, you know? Exactly. And I also feel like just the space in general, especially with TikTok and the rise of these extra... Um, fast or like, you know, I feel like YouTube is a little bit better because we get to have um, more time with the content production. But I feel like with TikTok and even like faster platforms that I'm sure are coming, I feel like creativity is not meant to be um, 
operated in a fast food way mm-hmm. and YouTube and um, Instagram and TikTok. Like we have kind of, even though creators are really powerful, amazing, um, capable superstars, like really, I truly believe that. Um, we've also taken the place of what maybe like a creative agency does, which, you know, has um, a team of people that have months to execute a vision. And I think what content creation and social media have done is we fast foodized the whole thing. And I don't think we're supposed to make creativity like fast food. I think that's why psychologically it is so taxing on us. And I don't think I should be making a whole story or narrative, um, you know, with beautiful lighting and color grading and fonts and, you know, royalty free music in a week. And I think I had to get really clear about that too, which makes so much sense why people, um, Towards the end, you know, or some part in their journey, it just becomes about money and sponsorships. And for me, I was like, I'm going to quit before then because I do not want to just be known for, you know, like taking all the coins. Like if it will free my heart, I will, you know, take a pay cut, which is what I did. So mm-hmm. I love that. I love that analogy too, like fast foodized. <laughs> That's what content and social media has become. It's like unhealthy for the creator and it's more unhealthy for the consumer as well. Cause our attention spans are so short and then creators are forced to make like five TikToks a day. And they're all like, it's quantity over quality and it's exhausting. And the, I don't know, it's, it's, it is not healthy in my eyes. Yeah, definitely. And especially, Eileen, like the types of the, the caliber of content and the quality of the stuff you're producing, like just you, me talking about you as a viewer, I'm like, it is so high quality. I can't even believe that for, you know, X amount of years, for five years or six years, 10 years, whatever it may be, that you've been showing up and producing high quality content for that long and it's just you it's like anyone would have a mental breakdown honestly and I'm like many breakdowns along the way and now course. I have a small team and I'm not yeah. as consistent as I have been in the past but I have I'm okay with it because I, I have to find peace in exactly in my own, right yeah no like, followers no money yeah. no endorsements like yeah. we'll buy you mental stability and inner peace. So I totally get that. Yeah. And it's funny because this is actually the first year where I've set the goal to like put my health and well-being first before career. Like career had always come like number one for me until this year. I'm like, okay, I can't live like that anymore. Like I can't keep burning myself out. I can't, I don't know, just, just, I've just had that shift in my life. Yeah, definitely. I can totally relate to that. And also I feel like the pandemic was a reckoning of sorts, meaning you got really clear on, okay, if it's the end of the world, am I really going to go out like this? I don't know. That's me personally. And I was like, I'm not going to go out like this. (laughs) At the time that you started like shifting, like pivoting your career, was it 2020? Honestly, I feel like... I don't know. I feel like maybe it's just part of my nature to deeply question and challenge everything. Um, and so I feel like from a mental health perspective, I've always thought about how, um, I believe it really is. I'm sure there's going to be studies on it, you know, five, maybe 10 years from now, or maybe there are studies, but I do believe that, um, childhood trauma survivors specifically, um, who are, programmed for external validation, I feel like we are all attracted to kind of like um, the entertainment industry, meaning like, you know, um, child stars, you're typically probably a childhood trauma survivor in some way, because I think going through that trauma makes you not only addicted and attracted, but also kind of like equipped to be able to take so much um, rejection and keep, you know, keep performing for your value. Yeah. Like and literally living for approval and validation. Exactly. It, it and I do feel like in their brain. So I understand why they have issues later on. Exactly. And I do feel like content creators are the next generation of that, right? We don't have any more Disney stars, Miley or Hillary Duff, because we have 
have like TikTok stars and we have creators. And I feel like um, I was definitely one of the first YouTube fashion creators. And so we are kind of like the guinea pig generation. And so for me, once I started healing my trauma, understanding that, oh, I had been through a lot and I'm kind of just programmed to do things to feel worthy. And, you know, I would always look at my analytics and it would crush my heart when, you know, views weren't doing well, or, you know, I, it's a fight to be relevant. It's a fight to, you know, be seen. And then think about how much that probably connects to my childhood, you know, just, just, I, I want to be seen by, you know, f- family, teachers, wh- whoever. And so once I kind of connected those dots, it was like, holy shit. Um, and so I think just naturally, as I started to heal my own um, trauma, I started to connect the dots and how that showed up in my career and my love life. Uh, love life was definitely first. Love life, <laughs> friendships. And then career was kind of last because we are told that this is, you know, a really... Um, this is like the dream job, but there are really not dreamy aspects to, um, to this job, you know? And I feel like maybe we haven't discussed that or seen those effects yet because we're living in it. Um, but I do think 10 years from now, and this podcast will be my proof that we're going to have studies on what it meant to be a content creator at these times. And also Eileen, I started when I was 17. So I also had to heal the um, impact of becoming a social media creator at such a young age. And I think to, and I'm still healing through it all. Cause now I don't, it took me a long time to not look at analytics to just fuck everything. <laughs> and I feel like with Instagram right now, engagement's really low. I don't know where people are going or if people just, you know, um, like everyone's like, oh, like people are not liking the photos yeah, anymore. But I think TikTok, Instagram's kind of dying out. Slowly. Yeah, yeah. And I think like um, my old self would be like, oh my god, I'm so irrelevant, and like I'm failing at my job. But the way that I think about it now is like, huh, at least I'm free now because I'm like, <laughs> we're all not liking each other's pictures. We're moving to different platforms, and I was like, good. Like maybe now I'm cut free from all of that. Yeah. So. This is a really long answer, but basically Mm -hmm. I think I was thinking about it just as I began um, having my spiritual awakening, really, like just healing myself. I I can relate to this journey of yours completely because I also have childhood trauma related to feeling invisible, wanting to be seen, wanting to be liked. And obviously it's all tied into why I loved media and entertainment and why I love to perform. And I had to heal the same things that you had to like detach my self-worth from the numbers and the analytics. And yes, we can talk about this like it's an influencer, content creator, or child star issue. But I really think that everyone, especially the young generation, has a level of this because no matter what age you are, especially younger generation, they care about like how many followers and likes they get. And so it, we're still tying our worth with like that approval or that number. And, and this could even be in school when you tie your self-worth with like your grades and, yeah. and things like that. So yeah. So, so my question is once you started unraveling that connection between your self-worth and your success, external validation, is that when you started to lose interest in, in actually being an influencer? <laughs> Cause I've noticed like, I, I kind of like lost as a little interest and drive to, to create because I started recognizing like, Oh, like this is what's been driving me and that's unhealthy. And like, I like mentally I felt healthier, but like productive wise, I wasn't like doing as much because I'm like, I don't need to do this anymore. <laughs> I, I, I totally get it. Um, um I think I've, I quit YouTube. It's been the, whenever I quit YouTube is when I like fully launched my um, coaching business. So I think it's been about eight or nine months. I don't know. But honestly, um, this is something that I'm healing right now or trying to navigate is actually really do miss picking up my camera. I really do miss typography and fonts and graphic design and telling a story. Um, I love storytelling. Like I love writing. I love, I think, I, I think, I shared my life as a story because as a creator um, and not as a marketing agency, you don't have like a story to tell other than your own, right? Whereas like a marketing agency, oh, what story does this, you know, water bottle tell? And so I feel like because I always wanted to create and just wanted to share a story, I just, I chose me and that was easy. But I think 
Now, what I'm trying to figure out is I do still want to do a lot of the creative aspects. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I do want to tell someone else's story. I, maybe I it, I go work for an agency or get you know a corporate job where I can help a beauty brand you know tell their story, edit um, you know content create for them. So I really do miss the aspect of because I. I don't know. I feel like a part of myself is actually missing because well, I do feel like we, we create also because it was fun, right? Like even if no one, especially because no one was watching in the beginning, right? Like I did it because I it was fun. But then, um, and I think like in the beginning, I was like, oh, I never want to do that again. Like I'm so tired. I'm over it. And then now I'm coming to the point where I'm like, whoa, like I kind of just want to create a video, but then I don't want the repercussions of like, posting online and then comments and then engagement and all that. Like I'm trying to figure out maybe there's a way, if there's a way for me to create and not have it be um, so public facing. So maybe I'll get a nine to five. Maybe I'll do this for someone else. I think that's what I'm trying to figure out now. Um, but yeah, I feel like a part of me is missing. <laughs> oh, I, I totally get it. Cause ultimately like this, we, this is like your gift. You have a strength and this is part, like you are passionate about creating and you're good, you're good at it. And so what I see that this is the part of your journey where you're like learning to create out of joy instead of all those, you know, all those issues. External validation being, yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you, by the way. Like, I really appreciate that because obviously I respect your work so much and I um, recognize like you're so creative, Eileen, and beyond just like self-development and healing and spirituality, we, me and you both, we have like a passion for video. We have a passion for telling a story and doing it in a really, um, I feel like impactful way, like purpose driven. So I do think that is our gift and like, just thank you so much. Cause I like really respect you. Yeah, no, of course. Of <laughs> course. Um, okay. So now that you're a life coach, I kind of want to, I mean, I'm not sure if we answered this already, but how do you feel like you and your life evolved since changing paths? But I want to hear about the internal journey, like the, the discoveries, the revelations. Well, I think, we touched on it a little bit previously, just me realizing like um, as a childhood trauma survivor and all the things I've been through, I started examining like just all aspects of my life. And I think um, career was the biggest one and the last one, because I think, um, I think we are always told that this is, you know, the best thing ever. But then I felt, you know what, I'll just be simple. It was, just about how I felt. And I feel like we are, you know, vessels of consciousness, meaning we're here to feel, you know, and I've, I think I've always, I've always been, um, severely anxious. And when I was 21, I went through a, my first breakup of a really dysfunctional, abusive boyfriend, which triggered high functioning depression, high functioning anxiety, um, eating disorder, um, and my crazy drive for YouTube, um, which I also think saved me. So I think just like in the past two years since the pandemic um, kind of just all came into our lives in such a abrasive, disruptive way, um, we kind of just got to sit with ourselves and really, for me, tune into like, why do I feel this way? Where does it come from? Like, what can I do about it? And I am happier um, pursuing coaching, but I do feel like I still have more joy and more peace to figure out because I still have so much anxiety. I wake up with anxiety every day. And I think it's, um, I do think it is in part due to entrepreneurship, right? Because I have never had a corporate job and I feel like when I actually excelled was when I was doing normal things like going to UCLA and going to high school and just doing normal things and then having a side thing. Um, but what I'm realizing now is like entrepreneurship, it's so much self-reliance. It's so much, I have to figure this out. It's all on me. And every day you're kind of trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, and so what I'm realizing now is maybe I do need to just like clock in, clock out, have a task, have someone set up my day for me because um, I think Steve Jobs said, you know, he didn't pick his outfit because he wanted to save all of his, I don't know, thinking power for bigger decisions. Um, Whereas every day I'm trying to figure out 
like every minute of the day, like, what am I going to do? What am I going to wear? Like, where am I going to go? And entrepreneurship, it has been nothing but so amazing. And I'm so blessed. And like, obviously we get so much time and so much control and power over our lives. But I think for me, I am also realizing, oh, maybe this is why I'm anxious all the time. Because if self-reliance is my childhood trauma, having to figure everything out on my own, no wonder I'm excel. Like I'm, no wonder I excel at entrepreneurship. And so, um, I think right now I'm just really, really trying to find more inner peace and to really heal my anxiety. Um, and then social media makes everyone anxious. So it makes sense. Like, oh, me doing that for ten years of my career, I'm like. Oh, like no wonder I'm mentally ill. (laughs) (laughs) Unravel and release that. Thank you for being honest though, because it's, yeah, I'm happy that you're not like, oh, I'm completely changed and everything's good because the truth is it's a journey and there's always something left to heal. And also like about entrepreneurship, I feel like that's another one of those career paths that similar to being an influencer, a lot of people idolize and they're like, oh, that looks, seems like it's the best, but it comes with its own set of, like difficulties and issues. And yeah, it it is not for everyone. And it's okay to admit if it's not for you. Like sometimes it does feel good to have just, okay, my job is limited to just this creative role and I don't have to think about anything else. Like honestly, some like me and my boyfriend are both entrepreneurs, but sometimes we're like, we just want to work a normal job because this yeah. is too hard. There's too just many things to think about. And yeah. yeah. And it's all on you and pressure's high and it's yeah. really fulfilling. Um, I think like what you said, I think everybody has their own path, has their own purpose. Some people are really um, meant and their purpose is really to be like in the corporate world. And I respect that so, so freaking much, especially, you know, my mom's worked corporate for 40 years and she's not even like 60. So it's crazy. Um, but I think, I think I'm, I think in my heart and my core, I am an entrepreneur. I'm just too quirky and offbeat, I feel. But I think, um, I want to find my happiness first. And then from there, I think um, I can thrive again as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, but right now I'm just being real with myself. And I don't think, because I feel like in the beginning, I was like, oh, like I have shame because maybe I failed as an influencer or I'm not cut out for this. But then I realized like, well, if you're not happy, then being cut out for X, Y, Z, like who freaking cares? Like it's, it, it, I feel like happiness, peace, inner peace, uh, mental stability, like no career, no money, no likes, followers, no big, the, the biggest house in the world can get you that. And so I think that's what I'm on that path. Yeah. Like that's what I'm trying to find right now. Like yeah. that's just, all I want. I keep writing in my manifestation journal, like I want I'm peace. At peace. Yeah, I'm at peace. I'm at peace. I have uh, mental stability. <laughs> now let's take a break to hear about today's sponsor, Bombas. Bombas's mission is simple: make the most comfortable clothes ever and match every item sold with an equal item donated. So when you buy Bombas, you are also giving to someone in need. They make socks t-shirts and underwear with thoughtful design features everything they make is soft seamless tagless and has a cozy feel their underwear is breathable their no-show socks are engineered to never fall and they even work with high quality sweat wicking yarns made to keep you cool when you sweat and did you know that socks underwear and t-shirts are the three most requested clothing items at homeless shelters that's why bombas donates one for every item you buy so far bombas customers like you have helped donate over over 50 million items of essential clothing. Go to bombas.com slash TLL and get 20% off your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash TLL for 20% off. Again, that's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash TLL. Maybe your how you feel about entrepreneurship now is how you felt about creating before. You know how you, you I feel like there's a point where it's like it's tiring, it burns you out and you have to stop doing it completely and then after a while you kind of miss it because you're like, "Oh, but I I really loved this part of it." And then that begins the journey of approaching it in a healthier, more balanced way. Like you're still good at it and you still like you're still very capable of it, but I think mentally like you have to find peace. <laughs> and then th- after that you can every you can approach everything from a healthier mindset yeah definitely um doing anything out of shame or 
low self-esteem, like not feeling worthy, like that's what we want to uncover in, in all of our lives. I feel, um, because I'm sure someone else is, you know, killing it as an influencer or in the corporate world or wherever in, in their life. And they're doing it just because it's fun and they feel good about themselves. Then I am so envious and I, um, am inspired by that because I think, we're all trained to feel like we're not enough and that's totally okay. That's so okay. It is so common. And that brings up a good point. Like no matter what someone's success looks like on the outside, you don't know, they could be doing, dealing with these self-worth issues. They probably are, <laughs> you know, they could be really suffering no matter, like it doesn't matter how successful they are. They're suffering on the inside and yeah. So get to find peace. Everyone needs to heal. Yeah. I definitely think success is how you feel about what you've, accomplished. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, cause I think so many people see the outcome or the dollar amount or, you know, the material objects, but I'm like, if the person, you know, they, they have, they create a psychological hell, um, because of, you know, past wounds and trauma, then like, what good is any of that? And so, um, I'm on this podcast, like being really honest about how many times I've had to, pivot and change. And I'm still figuring it out. Like I'm still trying to figure out, okay, I'm happier than what I was doing, but not my happiest and that's okay. So I'm going to figure that out again and again and again. <laughs> totally fine. It's a lifelong yeah. journey. One thing I feel like you're really great at and you're getting better and better at is being your authentic self. Like you embrace your wild, quirky side and you're not afraid to just say what you want to say and act how you want to act. So as someone who, I, you know, no one's perfect, I'm not saying you mastered that, but I'm sure other people look to you because you're shining in that way. So what advice would you give to our listeners for how to like step into that authentic self? First off, thank you so much. Like as an Aquarius, that's like the utmost compliment, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like Aquarius is like very, you know, offbeat, eccentric. Yeah. Um, so as an Aquarius, I'm like, thank you. I feel so seen. But I think like one of the second or third iterations of your um, lavender I think it was a planner. You sent me a handwritten note and it was like, it was really simple and short. It was something like, I love how um, authentic you are. And, you know, two, three, maybe four years ago, um, I feel like I was way more not myself. I was so trapped and um, way more anxious and had, you know, deep cystic acne, frequent suicide ideation. So having that small note um, that you sent me, it made me, it impacted me a lot. And I wanted to let you know that. And I actually taped it and put it in my journal from probably 2018, 2000. I have it somewhere, but I taped it in my thing because it meant so much to me. And I like wanted to tell you that because I'm like these small gestures, like can really, of course, transform and impact someone's day and life. So wow. that's just a small thing I, that came up when you said that. No yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I've always you that way. I've always admired like you being yourself. So oh. go on with your tips. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's what came up because I was like, oh yeah, Eileen said this to you before, but like in a, um, an unknown. And so I think that, um, I think a lot of people in my life, like friends and parents, they think that I just don't care what people think and I just do me. But the truth is like, I'm really crippled by, um, what other people think. I think that's the human experience, super normal. And also I have such a big heart that I of course care so much about what people think about me. But what I always remember at the end of the day is what do I think? And maybe that process of understanding how I feel and how I think might take a long time. It might take years. It might take days. It might take researching you know, movies, asking all my friends opinions on X, Y, Z, you know, whether it's politics or, you know, a world belief, like I, um, do my best in whatever process that is for you is figuring out how do I feel? What do I critically believe about this thing? You know, maybe society says we have to do X, Y, Z. I'm like, well, how do you feel, Amy? Like knowing about what you do, how other people think, like, what do you think? Maybe I'll read a few books on it, listen to a few podcasts, um, cause I'm a huge researcher, but then, um, however long that process takes me, I'll, 
have to make a solid um, decision in what I believe. Um, And then I just have to stick to my guns and go through with that. And so what I would say to anyone that's trying to figure out, like, how can I be more of myself is that I hate the, I hate the term of like, oh, don't care what people think. It's like, no, I'm going to care. I'm human. (laughs) So it's okay to care what people think. And if anything, you caring so much about what people think, um, it's just a testament to your big heart and that you don't want to ruffle any feathers. But at the end of the day, um, you're the person that you need to make happy. You're the person you're, you're, you need your own approval. And so however, whichever process you want to take to finding out your own answers. And it might take you years again. It might take you a lifetime, you know, like what Eileen just said, um, what you just said. I don't know. But I feel like um, do that hard work and research and stick to it at the end of the day. Like it's okay to um, care so much about what your parents think, but um, what do you think? And then, you know, also, sometimes I might be like, oh, I actually really do agree with what my parents think, or I really do agree with, you know, this person's position on this belief. And then I'll just, you know, see myself through with it. And then again, also allowing space for that to evolve and change. Meaning, you know, when I was 20, I definitely did not have the same beliefs about a lot of things. And I allow myself that space to um, transform and change. And I don't guilt myself over that. Um but I think most people um, are so tuned into what everyone else is thinking that they abandon themselves mm-hmm. and they don't give space to really research or mm-hmm. just find out how they how they think and how what they critically believe. Um, so I would say just give yourself so much time to do that because you deserve it and it's important. Like, what do you think, right? And maybe you do really like follow the crowd. Like that's okay. Then follow the crowd, like stick to it. That's what I would say. (laughs) Yeah. I no, I love that. That's amazing. Um, next, I kind of want to ask you, what is like your favorite topic that you love helping your clients heal from? Like, what do you feel like is like your jam? Like, like, this is my, the issue I love to work with. And, and I want you to like, give us some advice on that. I mean, I think it's for me, just more of like, a feeling of like, I can see when someone and see as and I intuitively can feel when my client has started to take off the layers of heaviness, of turmoil, of stress. And I don't know, it's more like, it's more broad, but I I think Mm -hmm. like the moment that I can see my client go from wounded to worthy, like, oh, I'm not a piece of shit. I'm actually really kind, you know, that kind of like switch. That is what makes me cry. That is what makes me like so honored to like be a part of that journey. Cause like that's iconic, you know, like to, to finally get, it's like a life changing shift. Exactly. And I feel like, yeah, some days you might feel you know, you might, you might morph back into feeling worthless and like a piece of shit and that's normal. And that's like, that's part of the journey. But, um, I think the bounce back that becomes quicker, like I see my clients go, Oh my gosh, normally I would, you know, um, be so critical and say like, why did you do that? You're so ridiculous. Then I said, you know what? It's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. And then, um, I got back up again, like those moments, that's, what I live for. And that's what I'm so proud of myself for, you know, getting through. And so getting to be a part of other people's journey and assisting in that, um, you, you couldn't, there's no price to that. Like I'm, I like cry about it every night. I'm like, wow, like I get to do this. How, how amazing is that? So, yeah, that's beautiful. Okay. So I get it. It's not really about like specific topic, but just the feeling of like changing someone's life, helping them shift their mindset, how they feel about themselves. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Like I feel <laughs> you're like shining. <laughs> oh, you, like, you, you're, this means you're, you're aligned. You're so on the right track. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, okay. What about any, do you have any like main exercises or things like that, that you can share with our listeners in their own healing journey, maybe some, just, something you do with yourself or something that you work with your clients? 
to do. I feel like one of the things that we I do for clients is like when they come to me, they don't really have a mental health or even like just life toolkit. And so um, that's what I gift them with. Obviously, it's a lot of perspective shifting and trauma unpacking, but I feel like we give so many tools and ways to upkeep what we've done. Um, I mean, I love it all. What, what's in this, this toolkit? We have like EFT tapping. I got certified in like neural energetic coding and rewiring neuro linguistic programming. Um, like just so much, uh, like psychoeducation too. Like, um, cause it's a, it's a lot, Eileen. Like, it's not just me. We've, we have the best, like, um, psychologists, therapists, Reiki healers, intuitives, Mm -hmm. intuitive healers, psychics, tarot readers. Like I have a huge network and they come in for the program and they teach us up other coaches too. So, um, I would say there's not one specific tool. I think that, um, the one thing I would want anyone to do is to just get very real about, how you feel. I think the moment that you can really look at yourself in the mirror and go, you know what? I actually am really unsatisfied in my relationship or, you know what? Like this friend actually is really mean to me or, you know what? Like I really hate going to my job, right? Instead of just being like, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I'm unbothered. Nothing bothers me. Like life is fine. I feel like Learning to be honest with yourself and getting real about how you feel about everything, um, that's the sh- that's the starting point to when you would go find me, aka mm. coach. So right, it's right. not a tool. It's more so just tune in, like yeah. tune in. And it's Start to become okay aware. To, it's the yeah. honesty with yourself. Exactly. What are you exactly. really feeling about everything? Yeah. Wow. I'm kind of melting, Eileen. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Especially because I, I feel like I think like this, but then having someone to like bounce back and forth, I'm like, oh, this is a lot. Like in the best way, like feels like at, like psychedelics. I love it. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I want to know about more what's on your mind. What do you mean by melting? Do you just have like random other ideas and thoughts coming up? Melting as in like, uh, like, we're really just beings, like beings of matter, like shells of ma- like shells of consciousness on a floating rock. And I'm here enjoying, you know, this huge universe with Eileen at this moment in time. And we're not even in the same place. We have technology, which is magic. And we're bouncing off back and forth all these, um, I guess, I don't know what kind what big ideas. I don't know. I don't know what this is, but um, I think that's why melting is like life Just is really wow. crazy. Life yeah, life is, is really crazy. Like abilities <laughs> of life and the experience to like and being present. I think yeah. that's also why melting is like, oh, I'm really present here with my friend Eileen, and we really do get to see each other and affirm each other, which is so beautiful. Yeah. Yes. I think it is a beautiful thing when like, especially this, like the friendship that we have is like, I watch you change and grow from afar and we only catch up every couple of years or so, like to really get to talk. And it's, I think just the the connection itself is still magical, you know? Yeah. A hundred percent. I would actually say that the low maintenance friends are some of the most valuable because you don't need to check in or constantly, you know, being each other. And it's, yeah. Yeah, I would say that that's um, so, so valuable. Like the fact that I'm cheering you on and rooting you on and I haven't spoken to you in probably like a year, um, but the love is still there and it's authentic. That is, I don't know, that's invaluable. It's not even so valuable. It's invaluable. <laughs> You're so <But> yeah. cute. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I have noticed you, you've done some traveling, like you've been to Mexico, you've connected with different people. So what has that journey looked like? Do you feel like, like how have your relationships changed in the past few years? To be honest, I think um, I'm in this era where I'm rebuilding my whole life. I'm 28. I um, got out of a relationship nine months ago um, and it was like a two-year relationship. So it was primarily how I got through the pandemic. <laughs> um, and then also I think just like with me changing, like um, – 
my friendships have also, and also the pandemic as well, and, you know, transitioning out of not loving influencing, I feel like my life kind of just um, shed itself. And so I feel like travel is definitely one of the ways that I feel most alive because you get to, like, learn a new culture, learn, just meet new people, go out of your element. But I would say as far as like my friendships right now, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't want to be at anyone who's like, oh my God, I love my friends. Like I have so many, I, you know, everyone's so aligned. We're all like into mental health and spirituality and healing. Um, I think that I don't really, I don't have too many friends right now. And it is really a struggle because um, I think the pandemic it's just been so lonely on all of us, like for all of us. Um, but the pandemic also, uh, I didn't control it and this, this wasn't my choice, but I think a lot of my friendships just naturally, um, crumbled. No, that sounds really no, sad. Really relatable because through the pandemic, it really tested your friendships and it showed you who was a real friend that you want to see with, you know, regardless of the risks and who is just like, you know, someone that you know, but doesn't have to be a close friend. And this is actually an interesting topic, friendship in general, because as someone who's changing and evolving and you're so into like spirituality and all these topics, it, it, it couldn't be hard to like keep the same friends because I would imagine your friendships change around you. Exactly. Like, That's what like, I mean. You can't expect the same people to be around you if you're changing and, and you have to All be- the time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I feel like that's something that um, I feel like you definitely understand is like you're always changing. And um, while it's probably a good reason that some friendships have kind of just um, faded away without even like conflict. For me, it was it wasn't even like conflict or just a big thing. Cause I feel like in the past I had been mistreated so deeply by friends and then I had to heal and realize, Oh, like I'm attracting a lot of um, poor quality friendships. But I think now in the pandemic, I just realized like, Oh, my interests have changed the things that um, excite me or I don't know. Also not, it's not trauma bonding because trauma bonding means something else, but just relating to someone on the trauma that you both have been through. That I feel like is what was unfortunately a lot of like the baseline for a lot of my friendships. And once I started to feel better and started to be like, oh, I actually don't want to stay in this job. I don't want to do this. Um, it just kind of like, they just kind of faded away. And um, I think the universe definitely clears the path or, you know, brings you the challenges you do need to learn. So um even though it makes me sad and like I do feel super lonely, especially with this job of being an entrepreneur and content creator, I literally don't see anyone. I have a small team, but like it's not enough. Like I need friends, no, um, and I then I that. yeah yeah right. Like it's like team a is loneliness. As yeah, a hundred percent. So I think like getting real about that, um, mm. and then also in this day and age where you know everyone meets friends on, or everyone's on the internet, you know? So I did download Bumble BFF. This is not, you know, I'm not sponsored with them in any way, but I did download it like two days ago just because um, I, I really would like to meet some new people. And I also don't want to be in a bubble where all my friends are just like me. If anything, that's one thing I hated about being an influencer is that there was a time in my life where everyone was an influencer. And I was like, this is gross, not because it's influencers are gross, but because um, I think the richness that you get from a friendship is by being friends with someone who has a totally different walk of life, who has a totally different perspective. And so I love my nurse friends. I love my friends. I have so many friends that work in like um, work, work corporate jobs at Google and Facebook, and I love hearing what they have to bring to my life. So um I, I don't know. It's just, I feel I'm super lonely, Eileen, honestly. That's probably why I'm like super jazzed even to talk to you. I'm super jazzed to talk to you in general, but like even more jazzed. <laughs> this is one of my ways to like connect with people, period. Yeah. Like I, 
the year I didn't have a podcast, I got even lonelier because I was like, I'm not talking to anyone. Yeah. And I feel like I, that's what I was thinking about. Like, um, what would be so fun to have a podcast is like, you also get to have such, um, really fulfilling conversations, especially on your podcast. Yeah. So it's not just like, oh, you know, talking about run of the mill stuff, which also I need more of because coaching is a lot. Yeah. You- I, I, I agree with you with like having a diversity of friends from different perspectives. And also like c- certain people, it's fun to just do like, you know, stay on the surface and then certain people who like to go deep, like you need a little bit of everything. You can't only have friends who like to go deep because then it gets too serious and too heavy. Um, yeah. But in terms of like friends fizzling out, I, I think that's also an energetic thing. It's like when you as a person like you heal from something maybe your energy like becomes a little lighter you're not gonna be as attracted both like mutually attractive to people who are of lower energy who are still you know living living that reality and that that's probably what's happening and so I also find it challenging to like meet new friends who are into the same things and I don't know. I feel like I totally get what you're saying. I just know someone out there is gonna be like she said lower energy and that's so like condescending but I'm gonna, I mean I'm gonna, by no, that no, no 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 I'm gonna back up Eileen saying <laughs> that um I think that in the spiritual community there is a misconception that I have to be very careful with my words uh, there's a misconception that maybe if you're not enlightened or spiritual or you know like yoga or crystals which is totally not what spirituality is about then you're just like not as aware or awakened or woke or whatever. But what I realized now is that someone could have no idea about trauma or um, think about spirituality or think about the world, the world and maybe me and you like to, um, but they are just so kind and very loving and a respectable person versus maybe someone who does like tout around as like, oh, I'm holier than thou because I know you know, X, Y, Z, or I, you know, believe in God or whatever it might be. Um, I think that when, when you say, um, oh, like lower vibration, I'm seeing it as that person is not kind or loving or a respectable person, regardless of, um, spiritual beliefs of, you know, political beliefs or anything. Cause I think there are so many amazing people out there, um, that just exist and it doesn't have to be anything deeper than that. And I would actually say those are probably the people that are probably the most um, spiritually enlightened because you don't need to read a book or have a spiritual awakening to be a kind, loving, respectable person. And by you know, on the opposite end, you probably know that there's a lot of like toxic people in our communities of you know healing and self development and that. So. Um, yeah, I, but then, I don't know, I guess it's maybe more, I find it more common. Maybe I find it more common that people who don't believe in God or don't believe in the universe and the powers that be, that they are sometimes a little bit more negative and more um, rude to people. So I do see that correlation, but I definitely think in this time of my life, I want a kind, loving, like respectable person. And they're everywhere, you know, not just in um, the healing community. Yeah. Yeah. You brought up something that reminded me of like some people I know in my life. Like, yeah, I agree. Like there are some people that went through trauma and then they healed and then they somehow think they're like better than other people who haven't worked on their trauma or gone to therapy or anything. And I see that as that's still they still have more they still have more to heal because that is wounding but essentially like I don't I personally I, I don't believe there's any like you shouldn't think that you're better or worse than anyone else right we're all human beings we're all souls we're all coming from the same place and and so you should respect each human being regardless of their beliefs and where their backgrounds and it is true like I I've known some people in my life that they didn't have to go through healing they didn't have to go through a spiritual awakening or journey but they're just like kind good-hearted people and like they don't need to learn about any of this to be worthy or to be enlightened like they're already like maybe maybe they have less trauma than us and that's why you, you know and that's totally fine so it's some people are truly living in a state of fear or in a state of anger and you can still love them and accept them. But like, 
I'm, I'm just saying that's a reason you're not going to be like best friends. I know I 100% understand you, but I was like, I know someone out there is going to be like, that's holier than thou thinking, which we, me and you are definitely um, acknowledging because that's definitely something that is so prevalent in our communities. And it makes me sad because it's just, oh, we're just doing more matrix stuff of like, you know, and then I think the kind, loving, respectable people, I think that it doesn't even have to do with trauma. I think for how I believe is I think there are just people that are, that's their soul. Like you are just a kind and loving, Mm -hmm. I would say probably a lot of people that I know that are deeply traumatized are some of the kind, most kind and loving and respectable people healing or not. And um, of course I would want them to heal and see how great they are. Um, But I think it's just, it's, it's their soul. Like it, it's like dogs, like it's, it's part of their soul, you know, like dogs are just unapologetic, loving, and they're so vibrant. I'm like, trauma or not, you guys rock. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I feel about my kind, loving, respectable friends who have healed or not healed. I'm like, you guys rock. Okay, I guess we're kind of nearing the end of the hour. So how about I end with what is the main piece of advice that you want to leave listeners with? Like if they were to take away anything from today's conversation or or anything actionable that you'd like to share with them, what would that be? This is what's coming up for me. Like this is how I choose to live my life at this current stage is um, be afraid and do it anyways. Like be scared and do it anyways. Like, um, there, I don't think there'll be ever a time where you're fully ready or where you're not going to be not scared. Like cry, be anxious and do it anyways. Meaning um, take the shot, you're worth it. And there is pain and difficulty in staying the same, meaning ignoring that your job sucks or ignoring that you're friends or boyfriend might not be treating you the best or that, you know, you just want something different. There's pain in that. And then there's also pain and difficulty in, um, being scared and doing it anyways. And I'm telling you, choose, be scared and do it anyways, because I think that's more worthwhile. And, um, how else are you going to find confidence and trust in yourself if not for the challenges, right? Like it's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be difficult, but the difficulty and pain of staying the same, you don't get, you know, confidence or self-trust. There is no gain in that. Um, so both, both paths are difficult, but I'm like, choose the one that's worthwhile. So that's me talking to me. Cause I'm like, I'm really scared all the time. Like, cause when I transitioned to coaching, I had to get like two business coaches to really, I had so much imposter syndrome. I was like, oh my God, no one's going to hire me. Who am I to do this? Like, I don't know anything about mental health. Like there's therapists and psychologists and like other people out there that are so much better than me. And I was like, no one's going to hire me. And just getting to coach and finally um, be this version of myself was a lot of healing. So um, be scared and do it anyways. I was so scared that no one was going to hire me um, when my website went up and I did it anyways. Yeah. And now we're here. <laughs> now we're here. Yeah. I love that advice. It's so true. And even me, like I think everybody, no matter how successful, what level you're at, you have a level of fear. You still have fear and you still have to overcome it because you're right. Like the other option is to stay in your comfort and over time, that's going to become more uncomfortable than it, than it feels to actually act on that fear. So yeah, if you, if you can truly learn to live that way, like feel the fear do it anyway, you'll be so proud of yourself and you're going to yes. just do amazing things. You're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Eileen. You yeah. are too. I thank appreciate you. that so much. Uh, all right, Amy, what is next for you and what are you excited about now? What's next for me is figuring out how I can get that creative um, part of my identity back, like wherever that is, maybe getting another job where I can do, you know, something more artistic. And um, I'm thinking about taking design classes, maybe taking motion graphic classes, because I always wanted to learn how to do that. So um, I think that's what's next for me is learning how to bring back that um, part of content creation that I love, but not in that 
maybe capacity. So I'm going to still coach. Um, I, I have two one-to-one spots. So um, if anyone wants to work with me privately, that's definitely open this summer. Um, I'm going to try and find out how I can use my talents and gifts in another way. Um, I'm probably trying to go on some dates, friendship, friendship dates, and also just normal dates. And I'm just trying to, I'm trying to just live a good life, which is, I'm just trying to, you know, be mentally stable, which I'm yes. not, not, but we could all, we could you know, all be improve. more mentally stable yeah, and, and find more, more present presence in our lives. Yes, exactly. So when I say mentally stable, although like we're always destigmatizing mental health and mental illness, um, when I say that, I mean like just finding more peace for sure. Like everyone could use so much mm-hmm. more peace in their lives. Love it. Okay. Where can our listeners find you online? You can find me at tobeseenandsafe.com um, for my coaching services and then also just at Amy underscore Lee um, on Instagram and all other, I think, no, just Amy Lee on all other social platforms. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Everyone, make sure to follow Amy. I'll link everything in the show notes. Thank you, Amy, for coming on the podcast. I really enjoyed it because we literally just chatted like friends. I didn't even ask you most of the questions I had prepared. That's good. I'm so happy because I'm like, I feel like we already started the podcast talk before we even um, recorded. And I think it's just uh, because our conversation was flowing so easily. So that makes me happy. (laughs) Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eileen.